So this is Steve, and I'm here with Bev Zuber, who is the Wayne Township Assessor. Correct. And she is running for a third term. Uh, she's opposed this time, so we thought we'd sit down with her and kind of do a check-in. And I'm also going to put a highlight on here, a link to the previous interview we did back in 2010. Terrific. And there was a lot of, I looked at it again this morning, watched it, and there was a lot of good information in there. So we're going to include that link as well. Feed off of that. Terrific. Yeah. Okay. But uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe for those who don't know Bev Zuber. Well, I'm Bev Zuber. I am, let's see, the running for my third term. I am married for 34 years, three daughters, two son-in-laws, and my very first granddaughter. I uh, graduated Bishop Lewers and uh, took classes at IPFW, and I focused on supervision and business administration. Um, I've been the Wayne Township Assessor for the last eight years, and I love what I do. Um, created a staff that I'm very proud of, surrounded myself with the best, brightest, and most educated as I can get them people. Uh, we're doing a wonderful job, and the state keeps issuing different things at our staff. You know, they're constantly changing the rules. So I think uh, we're flexible and very, very well educated and doing an excellent job. I neglected to mention, but a Democrat as well. Yes. So why run for a third term? <sighs> because either I'm crazy or the job's not done. Assessing still needs to be done. And the rules from the state are constantly changing. The demands, the deadlines, the, um, the different requirements from the state. So in our work and our education. So pretty much with the education, we've stayed ahead of the curve. Um, a number of us were in the first level three graduating class because I had pushed classes um, on, on the staff. And even though these classes weren't required of us, I felt education was so important that when they created the level three, a number of us already had basically three-fourths of the classes required. So. Um, Running for a third term, the education isn't going to stop. The rules aren't going to stop. And assessments need to be accurate. I think we've turned the office into um, user-friendly, both on our website and at the front counter, dealing with taxpayers. When they come in, they may not hear what they want to hear they're probably going to hear more than they want to hear because we explain everything to anyone who questions their assessment. And it's important to question your assessment because it hits your pocketbook. And we need to keep it transparent. We need to explain as well as we can uh, because assessing is so difficult and so complicated that the more we can reach out the more response of our office can be, the more the taxpayers understand and they aren't angry. They get it. It's not necessarily what they want to hear, but they get it. One of the things that we talked about back in 2010 was the advances in technology. Um, and I would imagine that even though there have been and continue to be a lot of advances, um, it still requires that human touch. Absolutely. Um, we are in the process of working on our, we're out in the field for the cyclical reassessment. And we have touch pads, which is wonderful. Um, a year ago, when we were out in the field, we had to take paper property record cards with us. And the purpose of the cyclical reassessment is to walk the property, the perimeter, and 
verify that the information we have on record is exactly what's there. There wasn't a garage removed or built. There wasn't uh, an addition off the back of the house. And verifying that information for our records ensures everybody's only being taxed for what they have, not for what they don't have. Um, the property record cards with the rain, the snow, any elements, we were a disaster. And, you know, we still have to watch the weather with the touch pads, but it's instant data. It's there. It saves so much time and money in paper and printing. So between the technology for our instruments and what we're doing out in the field, We've also got the technology back at the end. Online we have the comps area for the website. And those are comparable sales that anyone can go online, put your address in, it'll bring up the area and show you everything that's sold within the last year. And the nice part is um, assessing compared to appraising appraisers use hopefully the last three months of sales. Assessing, uh, nothing's changed. We're still using the sales from a year ago to create this year's value, which is what you pay taxes on next year. So you've still got that three-year window. But the sales being online, it's um, it's wonderful to have someone at home call and talk them through, get them to their neighborhood, bring up the sales, and show them. Walk the neighborhood. Look at these houses. Just you decide. Is, if this house sold for X amount of dollars and this one sold for X amount of dollars, what would yours have sold had it been on the market? And the normal response that I get is, no way, that sold for that much. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it makes the homeowner understand if things are selling for that much, my assessment isn't out of line. Now, with assessments, this isn't really part of your question, but with assessments, we're shooting for the median. And the simple nature of the beast is, as always, if you're shooting for the median, that's where the majority of the assessments are going to end up. But you're always going to have those that are too high and too low. We still don't hear from the ones that are too low, but the ones that are too high, you've got to appeal. And back to technology, you can get paperwork to appeal online. It's not required, but you know you can appeal on a napkin. You can appeal on a letter. But the official forms from the state, everything being online is wonderful. It makes it easier for the property owner and us. So someone might think, all this technology, why do we need to educate the assessors? Uh, because education for the assessments is so complicated. There is the level one book from the state. Level one is a week-long class. You take the test at the end of the class. Uh, you're certified pretty much in residential. Level two uh, pretty much covers the commercial and the rentals then nothing is the same, um, especially in Wayne. We are the most diverse, unique, the character area of town. And to walk along a street, as we all well know, you can have a residential property next to uh, a mom and pop store, next to a duplex, next to another residential, all of this is put into a neighborhood, and you value the neighborhood. The new house next to the 100-year-old house is nothing new in Wayne. 
So all of those things have to be taken into account. The newer house, depending on the shape it's in, is going to sell higher than the older house that might not be in as good a shape. Now the education, to know those difference, come up with your, um, your multiply, gross rent multipliers for rental properties versus uh, evaluating the sales comparisons for owner-occupied, everything feeds into each other and the more educated you are, the better the assessments are. And they have to be good or you're cheating the taxpayer. We have taken the education for assessing kind of to a new level. Um, to me, education means the world. And the more educated the staff is, the better able they are to do assessments. The better the assessments are, the more accurate we can be and the more accurate the tax rate can be. So it's not being inflated or we're not being cut short. So um, when we started eight years ago, we had three people, I believe, who were level two. The state's now implemented level three. We now have all 12 at level two and eight out of the 12 are level three. We have hundreds of certifications from the IAAO and we also have um, IAAO designations, which is kind of like having your masters in assessing, if there was such a thing. Um, we already have two IAAO designations and another five people who are on the road to receiving theirs. So, I'm very proud of that. Sure. And, and you and I have talked about it before, the, the diversity of Wayne Township and how that plays into assessing. Yes. Well, assessing is done by neighborhoods, and the neighborhood isn't necessarily um, the boundaries for a legal description where that's your neighborhood association. Neighborhoods to us are very different, and the neighborhood is what was built approximately the same time, what is affected by the same influences, whether it's a store coming in or a store closing and going out. That affects the value of the property. If there's no retail, if there's no grocery, it's a tough neighborhood to sell a house. You don't have the amenities. So all of those different things in all of our neighborhoods do make a difference. And then you've got the ages of the houses, you've got the different, different characters and the different uses. Um, character, we've got some neighborhoods that are a little bit cookie cutter. That would be our most cookie cutter neighborhoods are pretty much southeast, the small uh, post-war bungalows. Now, then you have um, Lakeside Park which you've got bungalows thrown in next to fourplexes. You know, the huge, beautiful, old uh, character houses. And valuing those very differently, but they're in the same neighborhood. So it's a challenge, no question. But the more you know the neighborhood and the more you talk to the homeowners, the better off your assessment is. Uh, so one of the changes that you've made in the assessor's office was the move, I, I believe if I understood this correctly, that you've moved the commercial properties um, to the county assessor. Correct. And talk to me a little bit about that change, what necessitated it. And, and well, I have a staff of 10, besides myself and the chief deputy. There are 30,000 properties in the residential areas that 10 people to do those properties uh, along with the state adding to our responsibilities. The state decided um, annual trending. This was required from us. They also 
put uh, the income approach into play. Well, Wayne Township has an awful lot of rental properties, um, probably about 20%. Those have to be valued differently, um, which takes a lot more time and education. Um, those houses are being valued based on the income that the property can generate. Completely different than the sales approach. The owner-occupied houses are valued based on the sales in the neighborhood. Well, if you have the two different approaches just for residential, think about the commercial team or the commercial properties. If in our manuals, um, golf courses all have a baseline. Um, strip malls are a kind of combination of income approach and square footage. Um, everything's done so differently that just to be adept at residential or income or commercial industrial it takes a lot. And the question came up, are you doing justice to the properties, to the assessments? And Stacy and I sat down. The council would not increase my staff. So the choice was made because her staff is by far larger than mine. She has a team that she devoted to the commercial properties. And she offered to add to the team a couple people because her budget would allow her to do that. She would add a couple more people to the team and serve the properties of Wayne Township, the commercial properties. The reason I did it was because it was the right thing to do. Um, we weren't doing justice to those properties and it was also taken away from the residential. So um, we decided, go ahead, let's give it a try. She had people who were very experienced. Instead of in Wayne Township, I would have to train somebody on golf courses. And I only have two. She already had someone trained to do golf courses or to do industrial complexes. And so it just made sense. It was the right thing to do. And it's worked out well. So, so talk to me a little bit about the appeals process and how you look at appeals. <sighs> uh, I, I think appeals are the only recourse a property owner has. When we talked a little bit earlier about the nature of the beast, shooting for the median, you're always going to have those uh, appeals that are high. Those high appeals, my, my take is, if you even remotely believe you're off, you're too high, I need you to appeal. We have been to neighborhood associations. We've had forums at the public library. We've gone to women's clubs. We've gone to anything that we can be invited to just to talk to the property owners. If uh, you are in that upper category too high and you don't take any action, you don't appeal, you only have a 45-day window in which to do so. So the knee-jerk reaction to me is appeal. You can always withdraw. But if you don't appeal, you're stuck with that assessment. And if the 45 day window closes and then you come to me and say, I think I'm too high, there isn't anything you can do. There isn't anything I can do. The window's closed. You're stuck with it. And it's not fair. So my feeling is the best way to protect yourself is to appeal. I've got a staff of five people who handle 30,000. Uh, the nature of the beast is you're going to have those that are too high. Five people in 45 days can't
can't get through all the appeals. And in addition to that, how many people wait to the last day? Quite a few. And there's no way we can avoid those appeals. So pretty much on those last couple days, when you bring in your assessment, our immediate reaction is protect yourself, appeal. We can, we can always show you what the sales are, run through the comp site with you, have you withdraw. But if you're too high, we need to get it right. And, and, and that's part of, I, I think, in conversations that we've had before, that's part of why you like the appeals, because it's yes. kind of double checking. Absolutely. Well, when we review all the appeals once they've been filed, um, it's, it's really interesting. Um, you can graph them on the map and show concentrations of the appeals and what area they're coming from. If they're all coming from one particular neighborhood, more so than anywhere else, um, it's an indicator to us. We need to get back out there. We've done something wrong. Either um, crime has gone up or amenities have closed or something's going on with the neighborhood and we've, we've missed it. So it's a great double check. So, our, you know, we, you talked about it a little bit, um, looking for another term. Are, yes. there, are there improvements that you feel that you can still make? Uh, what do you have kind of in mind? Well, one of the things that concerns me is my opponents talking about using the team um, approach to the office. And that's what they were pretty much doing when we got there. And it didn't work. Everybody had their portion of the work. You had your, per your people who did the sales, your people who did the field work for appeals, your people who did field work for uh, permits. When someone comes in and says, I don't think my assessment's correct. We talk to them. You, you have to remember we do mass appraisal. When you come in, we finally look at your house individually. And having somebody come to you at the counter and say, I don't know anything about that. I don't think that's how you serve the taxpayer. And what I mean by that is if you're talking to the person who uh, approaches the PETA BOA board, which is when we can't resolve, we don't agree on what your assessment should be. Your next recourse is the Property Tax Review Board. Uh, that's made up of realtors, appraisers, uh, people that know the market, and they look at your evidence, they look at our evidence, and then they determine what the value should be. Now, if I come in or if you come in and say, I believe my assessment's wrong, it's too high, and I say, is there something unique about your house? Um, we'll come out and check it. It would be a different team that would go out and check it. But I'm the one that handles the appeal or the PETA BOA board. I've never seen your house. I've got somebody else feeding me information. And to me, it should be a one-stop shop. When you come in, I'm going to go see your house. I'm going to talk to you, and together we're going to go to the Peter Boa board if it needs to come to that. Sure. One person um, in the team for each tax, it, well, this is what we've done. Each task taxing district has a representative. And what we found is they buy into the neighborhood. They, it's their baby. They watch the crime rate. They watch the fire reports. They handle the appeals. They handle building permits. They know what's going on in your block. It's not fragmented. 
it's one cohesive, hopefully uh, consistent person who knows so much about your neighborhood that when you come in and say, I live at such and such address, they know exactly where you're talking because they were just out there. Sure. It works. Sure. When we talked in 2010, you were talking about um, cyclical assessments. And uh, I think at that time, if I remember correctly, you were trying to get into a pattern um, of regular cyclical cyc cyc cyclical cyclical assessments. <laughs> There's our uh, everybody watches my interviews for the one moment. So there it was. <laughs> um, talk to me a little bit about where you're at in that process, and, and if you've if you've got it tuned like you wanted. And it's terrific. It really is. I am so happy that uh, the state finally decided instead of doing the mass reassessment once every 10 years, we now have cyclical, which means once every four years, your property is going to be inspected. Now, doing the cyclical keeps the assessment so much more accurate this way. Uh, you don't have when we did the 10-year reassessment, uh, you would show up and it was, there could be a completely different house there compared to what was on our records. So much had changed, either being added or removed from the property. And the four years makes it so much better because the accurate's that much more, or the, the information is that much more accurate and fresh. Um, being out in the field is, which we've all taken our turns, I don't ask anything of my staff that I'm not willing to do myself. And it's, it's great because you've got contact, hopefully, with property owners. The tough part is getting into backyards. Um, sometimes you can't, but um, using the Google Maps, using things like that, we kind of pick up our information as best we can. But ever, other than not being able to get onto a property, um, it's great information. And it's the right thing to do because if the information's off, your assessment's going to be off. So it, by keeping it fresh, by pushing us to be out there every four years instead of 10. I'm happy. I'm real happy with what the team's doing. Um, we are above, pat beyond where we need to be. We are, I think, about done in the last two months. We have pretty much finished what's required for this year. So the team's hit it hard which is another reason our appeals are high. We've been focused on this. Um, it's a good thing for the property owner. It's keeping my staff out in the field, out in their neighborhoods. And the nice part is we send them out in a group of four and you get a different perspective of other people's taxing districts. But having the group of four, all my people stay uniform and by communicating, it kind of keeps us cons consistent and the assessments are better that way. So I'm happy, couldn't be happier. Was there anything that we didn't cover that you wanted to talk about? I think we've got it all. Um, I love my job. I want to continue doing what I'm doing. I love the staff that we've filled all of the positions with. Um, they're sharp, they're bright, and they love their jobs. Um, I think we've done a really good job. I'm amazed how many people come in, deal with her office, ask to see me or call me and say, I never had such a good experience and you're a government office. Thank you. So. That tells me we're doing something right. Bev, on that note, I think we'll end. We appreciate your time. 
<laughs> thank you. Sure, and we wish you well in November. Thank you very much. Sure.